Hello, YouTube Sidekick here with another F4E bombing mode tutorial. This time we're going to look at loft mode. So, like in my previous video on laydown mode, uh, I'm, the format I'm going to use is I'm going to start with kind of the TLDR version of just how to use the mode. And then I'm going to step back and give it more of the sort of sidekick treatment where I try to understand not only how it works, but where it came from and why it works the way it does. Maybe just to appreciate some things about it that aren't obvious to someone coming at it in 2024, but might have been obvious to people in the 1960s, that will help you fly it the way it was meant to be flown. I'd, I'd also like to show you how to set up for loft bombing from the Wizzo seat. Talk a little bit about how the Wizzo would be useful in this mode. This is a place where you really could use a human Wizzo. I think will make it easier to get really good results with loft bombing. You can do it with Jester. I think it would be easier with a human. Okay, that's enough eye candy. Why don't we get started? We're at what I would call a start point uh, on our way to our initial point. We're setting the weapon selector to bombs. We're setting the mode selector to loft. We have to turn it to the left this time to do that. We're setting the release uh, spacing to 0.1 seconds. And we're going to set the release mode to C or continuous so that we drop all of the bombs. We're carrying Mark 83s. We're carrying seven of them, three on the center pylon, two each on each of the inner wings. So we need to enable those. And we need to put our master arm switch on. Now, that looks pretty good as far as the weapons panel is concerned. Let's go up and put the sight in air to ground mode. We don't need to depress the reticle. One thing we do need is to turn the flight director on, pointed to the left like that. We'll talk about that when we get to flying. Okay, now we're going to use the bombing computer to set ourselves up here. We're going to use loft mode, if I can find it on the list here. Scroll down, loft. There we go. We're using Mark 83 bombs this time. So we'll set Mark 83s. We're going to use 450 knots. I find that's a good approach speed. And we're going to use 500 feet. Uh, that's MSL, so we do need to put in the target altitude, which is 30 feet. Uh, I just know that from knowing the target. Now, I'm going to put in 3.8 here as the IP distance. I know that from having measured it. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but trust me for now, it's 3.8. The two pieces of information that we're going to get uh, so we put in the IP distance, we put in our loft angle 30 degrees. There's two pieces of information that Jester is going to use out of that. He's going to use the loft angle and the countdown timer. So we need to uh, jump in the back seat and make sure that Jester has got his information correct. Just give me a sec here and we'll zoom in. And there is his loft angle. We're using the low angle and there's his countdown timer. And it agrees with what the bombing computer said. So we are all set. Back in the front seat, the thing we want to check here is that the ADI needle is centered because that means that the flight director is on, which is going to become critical when we get to the loft point and have to do the pull-up. Make sure your flight director is on and that you can see the yellow ADI needle in the middle. Okay, as the pilot now, I'm flying pretty much head down. I'm going airspeed 450, ADI centered needle, uh, alt altimeter 500. Back to the ADI, get the attitude to down a little, we're climbing a little, get the speed close to 450. Back to the ADI needle, I get down a little bit, we're a little bit high. I keep flicking my eyes up to look for that IP coming, but I'm really watching my needles. Getting too low, pull up a little bit, watch the speed, keep it around 450. Keep the ADI needle in the middle. So this would be where it would be really helpful to have uh, my Wizzo telling me as we're approaching the IP, because Splitting my attention between the needles, which I really want to keep them exactly on, and seeing the IP coming. This is the IP here. It's a stream that we're going to fly over. As we go over it, I am going to pickle. I get a light. Now the countdown timer has started. When I hear a tone, now I have to chase that, that horizontal ADI needle up the ball, trying to keep the yellow, the vertical needle in the middle, and then the bombs go. Now, I left the labels on just because it's kind of fun to watch the bombs uh, from the cockpit here. And if we look down there, we'll actually see the bombs approaching the target. It doesn't look like a bad drop. See how they do as they get there. Well, given that we wanted to straddle the center of the compound, I'm pretty happy 
with those results. So that's a pretty good loft bombing attempt. Uh, so now let's let's go back to the beginning of this flight and talk about how we got there. Okay, here we are on the runway. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is how we arrived at the IP to target distance. To do that, we're just going to uh, bring up the mission editor here. Okay, there you can see our uh, flight path markers. You can also see the hint of the measurement line there behind the flight path markers. Uh, there's a measurement line that runs from the targets, the, all the squares up in the center right down to that stream which is going to be our IP, and it is 3.76 nautical miles. So uh, we're going to put 3.8 nautical miles into the bombing calculator in order to figure out all of the stuff that we need. Well, basically in order to figure out the countdown timer. So with that in hand, let's go back and set up the jet again. Okay, we have the bombing computer or calculator up again. Uh, the cockpit has been set to loft bombs. We've set the... Release mode to continuous, 0.1 seconds, and we make sure the flight director is on. All that happened in the background. So we're going to loft the bombs. They're going to be Mark 83s. we got to remember they're Mark 83s. Makes a difference. We're going to run in at 450 knots. We're going to run in at 500 feet. Takes a little while to get that counted down. And we are going to set our IP distance to 3.8. Target altitude is 30 feet, and our loft angle is 30 degrees. And with that, we have the numbers that we need, which is that we have a 30 degree climb, and we have a 4.6 second countdown timer. We've transferred those to Jester, so we can hop in the back seat and make sure they're right. Now, I will point out that you don't you have two uh, people in the jet, two pilots. You don't have to transfer it to Jester. You can actually go back there and turn those dials yourself. Turn them to 300. Those are in tenths of a degree for your pop-up angle. And 4.6 seconds are 46. So 346. Those are the numbers we need in the Wizzo slot. And so now we are ready to get the party started. We're going to go fly out, uh, turn to the right. Go around to the right and line up on that start point uh, along the flight path that we've set, which means that we'll pass that point we used as a start point, basically aimed at the, uh, the target through the initial point, and we'll be able to um, essentially do this run the same way that we did the last time when we started in the middle. Okay, well, while we're on our way out, uh, let's talk a little bit about loft bombing and why it's set up the way it is. Uh, the purpose of loft bombing is pretty obvious. Uh, it allows you to be able to hit a target from a greater standoff distance than would be possible if you were just dropping the bombs. Uh, and ideally, you're also able to drop the bombs using a low-level, low-visibility approach. Now, this becomes increasingly important as the SAM umbrella expands, making high-altitude ingress dangerous. And as radar guide, radar guided AAA makes uh, low or even medium altitude approaches dangerous, as well as uh, the presence of short range IR missiles do that. So you really want to stay out of the target area, but you don't want to do it from a great height. And so we end up with loft bombing. The idea is basically to use the acceleration and the momentum of the jet to lift the bombs into a trajectory where they fly uh, up and then down towards the target, obviously. This is not going to be as precise an approach as where the target can actually be seen. So uh, what we do to make it as precise as possible is we pick our launch parameters, meaning our speed and our launch angle, and the bombing calculator figures out when we would have to release at the top of the pull-up, and it, uh, it does that when we give it a launch or a loft angle and the drag coefficient of the bomb, essentially. So in order to execute the pull-up properly, we have to define an initial point where we will begin our final run, and we specify this as a distance to the target. Now, obviously, this has to be farther away than the release point. Um, the bombing computer then calculates the countdown time from the time we cross the IP to the time we must begin a 4G pull-up uh, to the release attitude. Now, the 4G acceleration is important, 
because a range of the bombs will be determined by the acceleration, uh, the, 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 how hard we throw the bombs, as well as our speed and final angle. And this is why we need to enable the flight director, because we really do want to try and follow that horizontal needle as smoothly as possible to get a good 4G pull-up. Okay, we're starting to get straightened out here, aiming at our start point. That's the point that we started the last mission at an active pause. So we're headed in that direction, and now my head is pretty much down in the cockpit again. Now, here is the difference. If I was doing this in a modern jet, I would have all of that symbology on the HUD. So I could be looking out the window for my IP at the same time as I was following the needles. Here, my head has to be pretty far down in the cockpit to go ADI altimeter, ADI airspeed. So it would really be helpful to have Jester tell me we're coming up to the initial point uh, so that I can get ready for that uh, without having to uh, look out the window quite so much. As soon as I start looking out the window, my all my needles go. All right, we hit the initial point. Light is on. There's the tone pulling up, following the needle. And the bombs go. And now we just have to watch our handiwork. Keep an eye on the compound down there. Oops, that's looking pretty good. I would call that a pretty good result. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. And I'll be honest with you, I showed two good runs in this video. they the two best runs that I did. Uh, hitting the target and loft bombing it takes a lot of practice in the F4E. Um, it can be done, though. Uh, as I think this video proves, but it is going to take a bit of practice. Uh, I, I did several runs and none of them, uh, not, not any of them were as good as those two, but uh, I think those two do prove that it can be done. So uh, go out to the range, give it a try. Let me know how you do. Uh, let me know if you find any secrets that I missed. Uh, drop by the Discord. Let's talk about it. And for now, this is going to be Sidekick. Signing off.